So I've talked about the idea of theme in the past. And some of you might think what I'm talking about today is theme, but I don't necessarily think it is theme. I think that it is similar to theme. I think that it functions similarly to what people think of when they think of theme, but I think it's its own separate entity. And I'm talking about the central core of the story, the through line. What I, it's what I call the through line or the thread that runs through the entire story. And again, I don't mean theme when I say this. Welcome to How to Write Good. I am your host, Daniel Poppy. You can find out more about me at danielpoppy.com. If it is your first time here, How to Write Good is a writing podcast that seeks to find principles and advice that can be applied across a broad range of writing situations. If you've been here before, don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button below, and share. So we're going back to this idea that paragraphs carry a single thought. I've talked about this in the past, and you can check out my episode on paragraphs if you want to. I encourage you to because I think it's a central idea to writing. I think that, as I said in the past, that uh, you shouldn't see the sentence as the carrier of a single thought. You should see the paragraph as the carrier of a single thought. It's different than what you've learned in school. It's different than what I've learned in school, but I think it's going to serve you better if you view paragraphs in that way rather than viewing sentences that way because if you view paragraphs as the carrier of a single thought, you're going to have more cohesive paragraphs rather than having these individual sentences and disjointed paragraphs. I actually started reading a book that I read before and I couldn't really remember the book very well or how the book read. And this author, I'm not going to say who it is, seems to have disjointed sentences. And that might just be me. I'm not sure exactly. I might be reading it in a way that it feels disjointed. But I've talked about how, this idea that you should break your writing down into paragraphs. And that's the, dis the discrete unit, the smallest unit you should work within. So instead of writing one single sentence, unless that paragraph is a single sentence, instead of writing one single sentence, you're writing the paragraph and you're moving on to the next paragraph. And you're going to be looking at a paragraph as a whole to fix that paragraph and then move on to the next and see how they connect back to one another. And that's going to make your writing flow better. And uh, I think, perhaps, I've talked about how you should write around a central idea within this paragraph, right? I, I'm pretty sure that's what I said. You're writing around a specific idea. You're writing around a specific action. You're writing, a, you have a core to the paragraph, and you're not necessarily explicit about what that core is, but you're still writing around that specific core. If you are describing a specific character, and this is an easy way to do it, you're not saying, this is how the character looked and listing out those things, you're trying to create sentences that convey how that character's appearance is understood by that character, that is um, seeing that other character, if that makes sense. You're trying to write sentences that convey what character B looks like to character A. You're trying to convey the experience of seeing and understanding and knowing character B to a certain extent, if that makes sense. So there is a central idea or feeling or action, or there's um, a central something at the core of a paragraph that you're trying to convey through that whole entire paragraph. And you might have a larger idea or action or feeling, right? Or a description that you're trying to convey through multiple paragraphs as well. So we don't have to limit this to one paragraph, but I think that I think that reducing it down to a single paragraph makes it more understandable. An entire story is similar. When you write an entire story, you revolve around a central thing. And I'm not necessarily talking about theme. This can come out as theme, but you can also do this in other ways. You can take a specific location. And I think the, this is where it gets really interesting and this is where it gets really cool because people don't think of it in this way. People usually think, oh, you know, my story needs to revolve around a central theme and I need to push that theme and push that theme and push that theme. Uh, first of all, I think people misunderstand theme and I've talked about theme in the past and this isn't my original idea. I think theme isn't the, uh, when, when I say, oh, this book is about love, I don't think that's the theme. When I say this book is about courage, 
I don't think that's the theme. I think that the theme is the statements about courage that the book is saying, you know, and you're not necessarily writing, you're not trying to push the book in a single direction and be like, oh, I think this about courage, therefore the book should reflect what I think about courage. You are trying to deal with the, you're trying to deal with the idea of courage. You're trying to write as truthfully as possible about that specific idea. And when you get to the end of the story, you can reread it and you can say, oh, this is how courage works out in the real world. I think this is really well summed up in uh, George R. R. Martin when I can't remember which book it is, but somebody said uh, there's a conversation about courage and there's this quote about how courage isn't about not being afraid. It's going out and doing something despite your fear. Okay, so that is a very definitive statement about courage. And you could take that idea and you could explore that idea. And if you wrote a story truthfully and you try to get to the heart of what that is, you could come out the other end where you're like, yeah, that's exactly what it is. And the theme is the statement about that specific thing. Okay, Uh, for example, if you deal with the theme of love, you could write a story that has the theme when it comes out the other end, when you get the story written, it could say that love can overcome anything, right? That is the theme of the story. Or you could write a story and you could come out the other end and you could have a story where it's like, well, love is a, it's a fallacy. It's a fiction. It's not something real. Both of those are themes. Both of them are saying something different. And that's what I think a theme is. So you can, uh, so what I would say is that that idea of love or that idea of courage or whatever idea you're circling your story around that's what i'm talking about that's the through line and that's not necessarily the theme that's this thing that's going to help you get to a theme if you're dealing with a specific um if you're dealing with a specific idea or an abstraction such as love that is going to help you get to a theme but that's not the theme itself but you can also do this in other ways and people don't usually think about it this way you can you can write your whole story around a location you can limit yourself by a single location and i think that writers used to do this more in the past especially when they were writing for plays i think that uh, shakespeare does this more than other people where he circles it around a specific thing or location right you can write a whole entire story in one location and you can limit yourself in that way and you can always come back to that location and you can look at that location from different angles and you can have different characters interacting with that location and it can be very powerful to tell a story because people live in a physical world uh, people interact with things physically people pe- there is the the human who is physical the human who is also an abstraction to a certain degree who understands things that we can't see etc who feels things however you want to describe it interacts with the world and the history of that person who that person is how they interact with the world can be different than another person's so they're going to interact with the same thing in the same way you know if you have someone who hates chocolate they're going to come up to a chocolate bar and they're going to interact with that chocolate bar in a way that is different than someone who thinks it's the best thing in the world and then you can even change it more you can have someone who hates chocolate and you can have someone who is uh, allergic to chocolate interact with the chocolate bar and the person who hates chocolate is going to be different than the person who is allergic to chocolate there's going to be a difference in how they interact with that thing and it's going to be showing us more about that specific object in the world and you can do that with a place as well for instance if it is a childhood home and you're having multiple different characters interact with that childhood home those multiple different characters are going to interact with that home differently than each other right they're each going to have their different perspective if they had their own rooms they're going to interact with those rooms differently they're going to feel more at home possibly in those rooms than other ones uh their specific areas of the home maybe they weren't allowed into and it's going to it's going to bring everything back to a central thing you can do this with a lot of different things i think forrest gump is a through line through his book and his movies uh, forrest gump is kind of the thing that doesn't change throughout the entire movies he remains the same character uh, there are things that grow and change within the story but Forrest Gump is the everything revolves around him everything interacts with him or he interacts with everything I think it's kind of a, a mishmash I think that he interacts with everything and everything interacts with him at the same time but you can see that happening 
You can do it with objects. You can do it with emotions. You can do it with events, right? You can, uh, there's a, I can't even remember. The book, movie is called Vantage Point. It was an interesting idea. Um, I think that it wasn't as memorable as they were trying to make it, but Vantage Point deals with a specific event, the movie. And it has, it rewinds, and then it redoes the movie through that specific event. And I believe that you keep on getting more and more pieces for what actually happened as you go through the movie. And like I said, this can be extremely powerful because it has different perspectives. It's actually in the name Vantage Point. So expand how you view this central th thread. Don't just think, oh, this central thread is a theme. First of all, it isn't. It helps us get to a theme. This central thread can be something as simple as a notebook. The simple simple this central thread excuse me can be something as simple as a letter right it can be extremely simple it can be a ring it can be a type of food like i mentioned before and you can revolve your whole story around that one specific thing and then you can tell a story in that way you could make it a telephone right you could have a lot of different people interacting with a payphone and you can uh, revolve your story around that central thread right I had this idea of a story, and I'm probably never going to write it, so I'll just say it right now. So I had this idea of a story that would be cool, and it would probably be similar to Rear Window in a way, where you have a cab driver, and the cab driver has all these people come into his cab, and you're telling the story of this cab driver going through his day. And throughout the day, it's revealing more and more and more about this mystery or this thing that's happening throughout the day. It doesn't have to be a mystery. It could be an event occurring in that day, right? Uh, for example, we just passed a last month was um or two months ago i think now man it's been a long time was 9 11 if, if you're in the united states that's a historical moment when the twin towers were there was the plane that went into the twin towers and you could tell a story of what happened but it's not people interacting with it directly it could be a cab driver interacting with the people who need to get into the cab and they're talking to one another and sometimes they talk to the cab driver or you can have them not even talk at all, but just react and what they do and um, them crying or them in shock, etc. There's a lot of things you can do with this idea and you just have to start exploring. You just have to keep your mind open. You just have to shift your mind away from maybe thinking about things as this linear story and maybe thinking about as as this uh, as this idea or this place or this object or this person as in Forrest Gump that the story keeps on looping back around. You can do this with character traits as well, right? So, so say you want to explore a character who is full of themselves, himself or herself. You can keep on bringing the story back to that pride, that hubris, right? And I think the Greeks did this a lot. They had this idea that too much pride is a bad thing. So they kept on looping that story around. They tried to bring it together and twist it together and, and, uh, I guess well, I'm searching for a word. They tried to tie it together around this central idea. And you can do that, right? You, you can explore that central idea or you can explore that specific character trait. And by doing that, you are going to get to the end of the story and it's going to be a fuller, more connected story than if you did not, right? This is why I say that you should plan things. This is why I say that planning books is a very good thing. Because as you plan, you'll get to the end of the story and you'll know it's important. You know it really hits home. And you can be like, oh, let me go back through. Let me do some planning. And let me tie more things to this part of the story. Now, I encourage you not to do it ham-fistedly, right? I would encourage you to be subtle about it. If it sticks out too much, then you shouldn't do it. If it's something that's like, hey, this is part of the story. Or if it gives away the ending of the story, if you don't want the ending given away, then you shouldn't do it. Uh, I think that maybe a prime example of a, a person, a storyteller who did this in a story well, and then you look back and you see how everything works is The Sixth Sense, you know, that uh, infamous or famous, however you want to call it, movie. It's not infamous, honestly. The cool thing about that movie is at the end of the movie, you find out the plot twist, which isn't a plot twist, first of all. It's just the culmination of where the plot is going. A plot twist is something that turns the plot on its head, in my opinion. That's why it's called a plot twist. This is just a plot revealing. It's like, hey, this is actually what's happening, people. And I've shown you the whole entire movie. And Shyamalan, is it M. Night Shyamalan, I think, who made that movie? What he did is he put all these hints. He thought back, how can I tie this central idea throughout the whole entire movie, right? And then you get to the end, you're like, this is what the movie is about. This is what is happening. This is the truth. He is revealing, he's 
pulling the curtain back and he's like saying hey this is what's actually happening in the movie and when you look back or when you rewatch that movie you see how he's circled around that idea the whole entire movie and he's done it in a very subtle way when you put together a story you are automatically going to be circling around an idea right you're automatically going to be circling around things because the the core of a story has to make you it makes you circle around that thing if you want to tell a story you have to circle around something but I think that when you do it, you want, I think it's better to understand that you do this because you can dig deeper. You can think about it better. You can analyze the story. You can rewrite. You can replan, et cetera, and get to the point where you are creating a story that is very connected, that is very deep, that is heavy in a way, rather than this very thin type of story. Things interact with each other. Uh, and like I said, I wouldn't call this theme, but this can help get you to a theme. It can be a powerful tool for putting a story together and making everything in that story stick together. And it's a lot more satisfying, and I'm sure you know this as well, it's a lot more satisfying to read through a book. And then you get to the end of the book, you're like, oh, I like that. And then a few years later, you read the book again, and you think to yourself, man, I never noticed that these things were connected later. I didn't realize that was happening. This is so cool. It's so much more satisfying. It makes the experience richer. It makes the experience better. It makes the experience more exciting because even when you read it multiple times over, you're still seeing things again and again and again. I like this in music. I like this in art. I like this in books because you can listen to and hear things that you never heard before. And I think that's uh, when you look at that central idea or place or whatever you're looking at when you look at that central thing you're spiral spiraling your story around or you're circling your story around and you are intentional about how you're doing it you're going to have more and more people engaging with that story and every time they engage with that story they'll see more and more things of that story it's kind of like an easter egg in a movie except it's better than an easter egg because it actually connects to what is happening and I think it's more satisfying for for you as a reader and I definitely think it's more satisfying I mean it's more satisfying for you as a writer and I definitely think it's more satisfying for the readers as well if you enjoyed this podcast and you want to support me there's really one simple thing you can do you can go to danielpoppy.com forward slash newsletter and sign up for my newsletter and when you sign up you'll actually be able to get access to my publication roadmap. So that's everything I have planned for pretty much every project I have into the next decade. Again, that is danielpoppy.com forward slash newsletter. You can also find the link below.